Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations with a little bit of a discussion about ladder line and why it is so tolerant of a high standing wave ratio. Now I did a little bit of research on the internet looking for SWR loss calculators and loss charts and I found an awful lot of misinformation about SWR and what happens with a high SWR on a transmission line. For example, if you have 100 watts going forward and a 3 to 1 SWR then your reflected power technically is 25 percent of that or 25 watts then they go on to claim that only 75 watts actually gets radiated or at least they strongly insinuate that at least two sites did that and that is simply not the case it's way more complicated than that and that is the, uh, one of the reasons why i'm going to talk about ladder line here one of the oldest types of transmission line in existence and what do i mean by this ladder line well, basically, a ladder line comprises two electrical conductors running parallel to each other, usually spaced anywhere between about 2 and 12 centimeters apart. Or on the order of three quarters of an inch to maybe six inches. Parallel wires maybe AWG number 14 solid copper wire works very well for that purpose and then what you have at intervals of anywhere from maybe three or four inches that would be about 10 centimeters to maybe 20 or even 30 centimeters plastic or polyethylene or solid hard plastic spacers to keep those wires spaced at a constant distance apart. You can actually buy this stuff prefabricated or you can make it for yourself. Now the dielectric in here is nothing more get rid of that little spot. The dielectric is nothing more than air plus the slight increase in dielectric caused by these plastic spacers but ideally in a good ladder line they don't contribute very much and air has a very low loss as a dielectric and if you use AWG number 14 wire or if you really want to get robust you might go with something as I did AWG number 10 one field day I built a transmission line out of this and made spacers waxed wooden spacers at intervals of about a foot or 30 centimeters six inches apart would be a good 15 centimeters or so and uh, that was one heck of a low loss transmission line now when you have a transmission line that has a very low level of loss you can tolerate a higher standing wave ratio before you incur additional loss of any significant amount than you could do if the line loss is high to start out with. Suppose that you run a ladder line here to an 80 meter dipole. That would be about 20 meters or 66 feet on each leg. And you get that thing up good and high. Here's your ladder line. The loss on this line is going to be very low to begin with. So if you have, say, example, uh, for example, a 600 ohm ladder line and a roughly a 60 ohm impedance at this antenna feed point, actually it's about 73 ohms, 
you're going to have an SWR on the order of 9 to 1 or maybe even 10 to 1. That's very high. And on a coaxial line that has a lot of loss to start out with, that SWR is going to cause an increase in the line loss that's much more dramatic than the increase in the line loss that will be caused by the same SWR on a low loss line like this. Now I looked for good sites that would compare and calculate line loss like this and I came up with this site by KC9 AOP Kilo Charlie 9 Alpha Ocean Papa he goes into some detail about various types of transmission lines but they are all, um, I believe they are all uh, coaxial lines that he talks about. But if you actually perform some of the SWR loss calculations comparing various different types of transmission line, here you go. You see transmission line loss calculator tells you how much loss is caused by a certain standing wave ratio. And uh, I, I guess I can actually go in there and try to calculate some of these. Well, no, my keyboard isn't connected up. I can't very well do it. But compare different types of cable at a constant, say, just leave the 100 feet in there and the 10 megahertz and the power input of 100 watts. Just leave all that stuff there. And then try different load standing wave ratios. It'll tell you what the matched loss is. That's the loss if the line are perfectly matched. The actual decibel loss caused by the transmission line's conductive ohmic loss and dielectric loss. The SWR loss and the total loss and then the actual power that you get out of the antenna for 100 watts of input. You will find that as you use more and more robust coaxial cables, that is lower and lower loss to begin with, the loss caused by SWR is going to get less and less. So a 3 to 1 SWR does not really cause you to lose 25% of your power. Theoretically, reflected power, that is just a theoretical construct, an invention. It's not really necessarily reflective of what happens in the real world with a real transmission line. Now, a ladder line, all of that said, all of this stuff said, a ladder line is going to have a vastly lower loss per 100 feet at 10 megahertz or any other HF frequency, vastly lower loss than any coaxial cable you will ever find because coaxial cable has a solid polyethylene or foamed polyethylene dielectric and the conductors are much closer together than they are in a ladder line which has primarily air dielectric air being the lowest loss dielectric known other than a complete vacuum and I don't think we're going to be doing this in outer space Anytime soon, at least you and I probably won't be. But I'll maybe on a place like the moon. But that difference isn't even very great, especially if the air is dry or reasonably dry. And, uh, you know, you don't have, it's not snowing or raining really hard or anything like that that would mess up this. That is why a ladder line can tolerate such a high standing wave ratio. In fact, in the olden days of antennas, back before we really worried about all this theory and just got on the air and, and did our operating, you know, remember those days, you know, didn't worry about whether or not we were going to have this or that or the other loss. We just stuck our transmitter to a ladder line now the and, uh, and just went with whatever we had. As long as this antenna is center fed, and is at least a, a quarter of a wavelength from end to end, but preferably 
preferably I would say it should be at least a half a wavelength from end to end. As long as we do that and this line isn't terribly long and we don't allow it to we don't try to bury it or let any obstructions come really close to it keep it free we can expect that this antenna is going to work pretty well and we really don't have to worry about stuff like that we might have some bands on which the SWR is only three or four to one some bands it might even be worse than this for example uh, well it, it, it's rarely going to get much worse than 10 to 1. But even if it's 10 to 1, you'll find that the actual SWR loss, the loss, the additional loss in the system caused by this SWR, 9 to 1 or 10 to 1, as opposed to a perfect match, that additional loss will be so small as to be less than 1 dB. And if it's less than 1 decibel, less than 1 dB, that means that a listener won't be able to tell the difference even if he or she anticipates the change, meaning it's insignificant. Now that said, we don't want to have a lot of little nothing in our antenna that are not working quite right because if you have say 20 different reasons for a one decibel loss you're going to end up with a 20 decibel loss so the sum of a whole bunch of nothings can sometimes add up to something and I did in fact write an article in QST magazine once and if you want to go on to the internet and search for it I invite you to do it here is the title of that article salute the centibel and what you say is a centibel well that's a tenth of a decibel or one one hundredth of a bell a, a term that as far as i know i invented if you add up enough say fractional decimal losses in an antenna it's not high enough off the ground. Your ground system itself is poor. The wires have bad connections in them. This and that and the other. If you add up all those little reasons for a loss that's less than one decibel, you may end up with a significant loss, 3 or 4 dB. Because, you know, a lot of little, little tiny problems can add up to one pretty significant one. But, for the most part, I ha hope I have clarified, for those of you who wonder why ladder line, why I expound it, or why I extol the virtues of ladder line so much. That's why, because as old-fashioned as it is, and as, uh, and I will include a link, by the way, to that um, KC9AOP website. I'll include a link to that in the description of this video, so you can go there and play around with it to your brain's demise and your heart's delight. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, signing off, saying 73, and so long.